let's keep it going. Um, so here is the task at hand. You see, I've got a big open white space and a bunch of nasty equations. So you know what we're about to do, okay? Um, so there's a couple approximations that we're gonna have to make in solving this system. And I'll point that out as we get to it, okay? So let's build this thing up. And so we're gonna do the separation of variables where I'm gonna separate the radial components from the angular components, all right? Um, and to make this easier, I'm just gonna say psi equals r times y, so I don't have to keep writing those dependencies. But recognize capital R is the radial dependence, capital Y are the theta phi angular dependencies, okay? So let's build this thing up. So I'm gonna first start by getting my uh, Schrodinger equation put together. H psi equals E psi, okay? So let's do that. So I'm gonna say negative H bar squared over two mu. And then now I'm gonna replace the del squared with the actual Laplacian, okay? So let's get all of that stuff in there, plus one over r squared times the Legendrin squared. Okay, beautiful. And now that's times r y, because right, h psi, right, we're calling psi r y, okay? And then now I can say um, minus the potential energy operator, which is gonna be z e squared over four pi Epsilon R, um, little knot right there, okay? And that's also times Ry. And then that all equals E to the, or E times Ry, okay? So there's our full Schrodinger equation, okay? So as it turns out, we can look at this in an alternate form. So like I've got this full Laplacian right here. Um, and there's a lot of kind of like shortcuts and steps I'm going to make that I don't really, I'm not going to hold you responsible for. Um, but as it turns out, in um, you can make an approximation between these two terms to make this a little bit easier to solve. And that approximation of these two terms right here, the second derivative of r and 2 over r times ddr, um, that can be approximated as 1 over r times second derivative in r squared times r. I'm not gonna hold you responsible for where that approximation comes from. We'll just, we're gonna take it, we're gonna use it, and be happy that we have one less term to deal with, okay? Ry minus all this other stuff, ze squared over four pi epsilon times r times ry all equals e to the ry. Great. So now, as we start to inspect everything, and, and I'm going to distribute this through, because we're going to be able to start collecting constants and um, getting rid of terms that we don't need. All right. So uh, what I'm going to now do in typical fashion, I'm going to push my constants here. I'm going to push them through over to the other side. Okay. Um, and I'm also going to distribute all of these derivatives through to the wave function. So now I'm gonna write that as one over r, partial of r squared times r, and then distribute that through big R times y, okay? And then now that's plus one over r squared times the Legendrin squared times r y. Um, and then now because I multiplied through by negative two mu over h bar squared. This changes my sign right here. So that's gonna become plus. And then I've got a um, two z e squared, right, uh, times mu, because right, I'm distributing through those constants, over uh, four, pi epsilon r h bar squared. And now I'm gonna take care of this uh, two and four right here. I wanted to write those out just so you see where they 
come from. But let's uh, just simplify those. Okay, so now that's just becoming a two. Great. And then now, of course, that's still times ry. And now all of that equals negative two mu e over h bar squared times ry. And you can see this negative two mu e over h bar squared, that's our wave number solution, right? It's the same, uh, the wave number k. Okay, so I'll write k with the little tilde, right? Because we know that that means wave number. Same k we've been dealing with, all right? Also, another cool side note, if we look at the collection of all of these constants here, I just want you to compare this for one second. I'm gonna write our famous Bohr radius, which you all know is 52.9 picometers. So the Bohr radius equals four pi epsilon h bar squared divided by mu e squared. So let's just compare those for one hot second, right? You can see that even though I reduced that um, two over four to be one over two and there's a four right here, basically this collection of constants is where we get the Bohr radius from. So we're gonna see this manifest just in the same way we saw our other equations manifest, okay? And let's see here, I think